this is just shit. And this is what a lot of the aftermarket company is trying to convince us that we want to run. No. No, no. Don't do it. Jump in this thing and see what it'll do. What's up everybody so I got a little tech tip today for you guys and it kind of just came to mind as I'm working on the super beater getting this thing race ready and it is about rear axle bearings you know the original taper bearings are badass they handle so much abuse and these bearings are 50 plus years oh yeah these bearings are 50 what four years old now and they are mint they're perfect this is what a lot of aftermarket brake companies are wanting you to run it is a shitty ball bearing design axle bearing drag bearing green bearing whatever you want to call it it's super crappy this was in my turquoise car the patina 69 charger there's a reason it's not in that car no more. There's a reason I don't run those in any of my cars, even with Wheelwood brakes on them and all that. So I had to figure out how, actually me and Brick at Dan's Drive, I figured out how we can run the original tapered bearings with the Wheelwood brakes because they failed. They failed on the General. They failed on Patina. Those ball bearing axles have failed in every single thing that I have driven. And it's not if it will fail, it's when it will fail. Some of you guys will be like, oh, but you know, they run ball bearing axles in all modern vehicles nowadays. And that's true. They, well, not all, but you know, in a lot of them, they do front wheel drive, rear, all that. Usually on the rear axle though, they're still tapered, but on the front hubs, uh, a lot of modern vehicles, four wheel drive, whatever, they will have ball bearings. Although they are not, <laughs> that big of a bearing and they have more than one row for the ball bearing there's only one row of tiny little ball bearings in there i mean look at that and think about the speed of those bearings if we're doing a hundred miles an hour and you have that tiny bearing just think of the speed that is having to run through those bearings and the load so a taper bearing that is a flat roller bearing kind of like a uh, steam roller wheel but it has a little taper to it so there's a lot of surface area that rides on the bearing ball bearings no they're shit i'll show you why this is a brand new bearing for a rear axle it's the ball bearing version i bought that a while back years ago because i needed to replace yet another one that failed and I have no problem cutting this open to show you what's in there because I'm never going to use these things again. Garbage. The General E, taper bearings, taper bearings, taper bearings, taper bearings. Even my freaking race car, taper bearings. The Chevelle, taper bearings. And the reason that uh, these aftermarket brake companies want you to run the uh, ball bearing is because it's easy to adapt their brakes to they don't have to make you take the bearing apart put a spacer in there to shim the bearing to allow for the thicker backing plate no it, they're just taking the lazy way out so anybody at home can bolt their backing plate to your rear axle and run their brakes instead of actually taking the axle apart and shimming it shimming the bearing the, the taper bearing so that way it'll work with the wheelwoods or and I'm, I'm not trying to pick on wheelwood but i'm saying all pretty much most of the aftermarket brake companies they make you run this because they're lazy and when it fails it's not their problem they didn't design this bearing it's not their part so when it fails <laughs> it's not their problem <laughs> that's somebody else's problem so hey they don't care you bought the product it's it's, it's now yours 
and somebody else's part failed that left you on the side of the road stranded. And one of these did leave me on the side of the highway stranded in the middle of the country. But luckily, a cool Mopar dude just happened to pull up like 15 minutes later. We loaded my car on the trailer and he trailered me to his house. And one of his buddies just happened to have another one of those bearings. And we used his press, popped it on, and I was back on the road. Just, I mean, sheer luck. But if I was running tapered bearings, would have never had that problem, ever. Because I drive these cars. I autocross, road race, drag race, daily drive. I mean, even tow with them, if I didn't already say that. Yeah, they pull my trailer, they pull the race car. They're workhorses. You guys with ball bearings? Ain't gonna last. I, you will be lucky to get maybe 8,000 to 10,000 miles out of these ball bearings. And I have burned them up several times at those mileage. Let's crack this thing open and show you. That is all that is what's inside there. Look at, I mean, here. Ooh, it's gonna be a little warm, but uh, I'm actually glad. Let me put my glove back on, it's a little warm still. So I'm actually glad that I did this, because look, that is all that your, the weight of your axle. And see how far apart those, bear, those, uh, those balls are spaced? Modern vehicles, their balls are almost, <laughs> their balls are almost touching. <laughs> their, their balls are not spaced out like that. They're a lot tighter so they can handle more load. This is just shit. And this is what a lot of the aftermarket company is trying to convince us that we want to run. No. No, no, don't do it. You don't want to run that crap. You want to run the tapered bearings. I mean... If this hunk of shit that's got a bazillions of miles on it, rotted to shit, it's got probably its third clapped out engine in it, and it still has the original tapered bearings in it. I mean, come on guys, don't run this crap. That's it. I fell for it. I put those things in several cars because this aftermarket company said that's the thing to do. And then you will have some guys that are like, oh, I have never had a problem with those things. And then you come to find out they are weekend warriors. They don't drive their cars every day. They roll in a trailer, they roll out of a trailer, they go do a couple autocross laps or they drive it to the local car show, you know, driving Miss Daisy, you know, they still have the nubbies on the tires. Now, guys like me that beat the shit out of these cars, they don't work. And if you're like me, don't run them. I'm just giving you guys a heads up. They are crap. Good old. 50 year old design, taper bearings for the win. This is shit. That is what your car is riding on, is that tiny groove with those wide spaced out ball bearings. I mean, look at this shit. That is a plastic retainer holding those little bitty, itty tiny little balls in place. Yep, so uh, what, and what happens to plastic when it gets hot? Yep, it melts. So then, those balls that are spaced out, well, they start to get tighter, then the balls start touching, then it starts grinding, starts making some noise. And at first, it's just gonna sound like road noise, like on your tires, you know, you're going down the road and you start, you're like, man, my tires are starting to get pretty loud. Well, then that road noise turns into a growl. And it's not like a high horsepower engine growl. No, it's like a, oh shit, something's failing growl. And then you find out that, hey, you're starting to get a little shimmy shimmy on the rear axles. And then all of a sudden your axle just falls out of the car. Been there, done that. So, yep, if you wanna keep your axle in the car, then you don't run these. China, America, steel, plastic, manly, girly little balls. <laughs> Can you tell I just don't like these things? Now the only bad thing really with the original roller bearings, and it's not even really a bad thing, it's just there's a spacer that's inside the differential that uh, allows, that pushes on each axle. Without that spacer, you wouldn't be able to adjust the preload on the, uh, on the uh, taper bearing. 
you know, just like uh, front hubs. You know, it has two taper bearings in there and it has that nut that you adjust to adjust the preload on the bearings. Well, there's also a, a, a preloader on the axle, which, uh, is it on this one? Yes, it is, okay. So let me turn this thing on its side here. See that right here, the little castle nut? That is threaded into that plate. And what it does is it loads the bearing in or out, which also pushes up, pushes on the shim inside the differential. And so it, it allows you to set your preload. So you'll take an extra five to 10 minutes adjusting your preload if you pull the axles in or out or change the bearing or change that you won't, you won't change the bearing because they're never gonna fail as long as you keep grease in it. And that's another thing, these are sealed and there's not a lot of grease inside there. You can at least change the grease inside the roller taper bearings. But uh, yeah, so that's really the only downfall with the taper bearings is, hey, you have to adjust it every now and then so big whoop i would rather adjust something than have something fail if you're gonna run ball bearings do it like the modern cars make it to where your balls are touching <laughs> and multiple rows <laughs> well time to throw this crap in the garbage where it belongs That's just my little tech tip for you guys today. And it doesn't have to be for Mopars. It can be for Chevys, Fords, whatever. If you can run the original taper bearings, do it. Because they work and they last. And they handle a crap load more load than those witty bitty little balls. So see you guys. Take care. Again, there's a reason steamrollers look like that and not little bitty balls. Super Beater is going to be in action soon, autocrossing and drag racing. All right, well, I hope I saved you guys some, from some pain and suffering on not running those bearings and then failing in your car. It's just a tech tip that I thought of because I was working on this huge piece of junk and the original tape bearings were still good in it. And so it was like the light bulb went off I'm like, ding, I need to tell people about these bearings because they suck. So anytime I come up on a little tech tip advice, which I've done in the past, um, it's just whenever it pops up, you know, I just think about it. I'll make tech tip videos and maybe I'll set them up just for like the YouTube membership guys or, uh, oh, so I started a YouTube membership because, you know, YouTube doesn't pay anything really. I mean, it's, they've really cut back on that. And so the only way we can, YouTubers can actually like do these builds and all this crap like this is from like sponsors and uh followers and memberships and all that crap and it's it sucks i know why can't we just build our own toys and have someone do it for us right <laughs> but no so yeah i've got to build these cars and it's fun to share these builds with you guys and i enjoy doing it too i just like building stuff take it out and thrashing it and if you guys really enjoy watching that kind of stuff um like I said, I started that membership and it's, I call it the tip jar. So if you guys can help with the tip jar, that'll help keep these builds going. So even if you can't help out and keep these videos going, just you guys clicking on these videos is thanks enough and I really appreciate it. And I will get to jumping on the super beater right now because now I have to make frame rails. Yeah. I, I only cut out the areas that were really bad just so I can have something to weld to. <laughs> See you guys.